Okay, let's bring in J.J. Kinahan. He is the chief market strategist at TD Ameritrade. It's nice to see you. What do you make of today's action? Well, I mean, it's pretty incredible. You know, we start out a little bit, I think, with a reaction from Friday because futures were only open for about 45 minutes after the number came out Friday morning. And you didn't have any uh, underlying stocks in pre-market, et cetera. So I think people were maybe just a little hesitant to get the futures too far away from the underlying stocks. Then you had that ISM number this morning, which helps, uh, you know, just confirm everything we saw in the jobs report. And also, I think, Scott, anecdotally, people are out this weekend, three-day weekend, weather nice in many areas of the country. They're seeing things open back up. They're seeing people at restaurants. I think there's a psychological element to this also. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, you've got your movement index. What's retail doing? What are we thinking now? So three months in a row, Scott, we've seen our IMX, and again, it measures what people actually trade, not what they say they might do. And three months in a row, our clients taking more exposure to the market, continuing to buy for 2021, taking 8.5% more exposure in March than they even took in February. Every single month we've seen this uh, pattern. And again, maybe back just to the optimism that we see overall. And what's really interesting to me, Scott, is some of the areas they bought. We see Apple, which has been a perennial favorite. We did see some chips. We saw AMD. We saw NVIDIA as buying. And actually, a name you don't often see, Walmart. Walmart hit its six-month low tick last month. Our clients were there to buy it. So stocks that are underperforming, back to Mike's point in his segment right here, our clients are 100% there, ready to buy a lot of these underperforming stocks. The tech names are also interesting, JJ, because one question we've been wondering is, is growth now back in favor after after a bumpy few weeks the nasdaq is still what three four percent off of its recent highs hasn't caught up yet with the s p and the dow you think it resumes its leadership position based on the action you're you're seeing from retail traders where they buying the dip uh, i i think it may continue to uh certain areas i think chips will continue to do well but you know one of the things we saw on the sell side sarah was facebook being sold as people have been buyers of that uh the first couple of months of the year so i did these things change a lot facebook though i think a little bit of that is some of the drama maybe that goes with facebook some of the government stuff etc but we do see apple we do see microsoft so you have the opportunity for these fang stocks to really come back in a way, and if you combine that with some of the things we're seeing with chips, we also saw Square as a buy last month. We do see, you know, you see a lot of opportunity for those stocks to continue, which really I think going to be the test is going to be as we head into earnings, because I don't think anybody's going to be forgiving in this earnings that's coming up. You're going to have to perform or you're going to get slapped down. So I think that's really going to be the most interesting thing that we come to over the next couple of months, Sarah, to really test the market. It, it is interesting, though, that retail is, is looking to take some profits on some winners. You see that in Facebook, which, as we mentioned, hit another new high today, a record high, but also Citigroup and, and Wells. The banks have had a nice run, right. and there's been some profit taking. You've seen it. Yeah, absolutely, Scott. And I think the the, uh, the banks particularly, it's a little bit of people maybe, I'm going to say confusion, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but you're, the market's telling you one thing with these 10-year rates, you know, 1.7 and higher. The Fed is telling you something else. We're going to keep, you know, the, the money flowing. So I think a lot of our clients are like, I'm not sure which way to go. They, they were buyers of banks last winter, so they're they're just going to take some profits and kind of see where that leads to. The other interesting name that you've talked a lot about over the last few months, Scott, is GameStop. And we, our clients were sellers of GameStop last month. It was like 200 was a trigger. And as soon as it hit over 200, our clients, particularly the week starting March 8th, our clients became big sellers of GameStop. And when it hit 210, it was kind of like sell with both hands, if you will. That's when they really started to sell that stock. So really interesting, uh, you know, the price action there, 200 really was the magic number, if you will. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.